Well, welcome back to Mondello Park, ladies and gents. It's great to be live streaming again with uh, Martin and his team from See It Live. Rallycross Championship going on behind me. We're just about to start the second heats as you join us. The weather is absolutely fantastic. They're a little bit noisy as they go by. Great action all day yesterday. Ireland versus England in all the heats. Great fun in the paddock last night. A lot of barbecues. Maybe a glass of beer or two had as well. It's great to have these UK visitors back again with us. It's like the big days of Irish Rallycross are back in Mondello Park. So the Parts for Cars IRX.ie Championship taking on the uh, Cooper Tires Five Nations British Rallycross Championship. From the juniors all the way up, uh, Liam McManus and Toby Maguire taking on the best of the British juniors, really close on trap. Up through the modifieds, Open Clubman has been great. And of course, the supercars, absolutely incredible. Michael Leonard and Derek Toll, quickest this morning, but it's really good stuff. So stay tuned all day or get your tickets online and come down to Mondello Park for all the action today. We're about to get going with heat number two. So there we are, we're live streaming at Mondello Park and the rally cars are already away with their second heat. And uh, it's been Thomas O'Rafferty out front pretty much all weekend. Oh, Quigley with a big move down the inside in the focus there, <laughs> trying to get by uh, Kinsla. There's a lot of understeer in Kinsla's car and Quigley decided to take his joker lap. Going with him is the little yellow 206 of Sean Cullen. That car wasn't out yesterday. And then Peter Roach 900, a new name to us, trying really hard this weekend. We saw great photos of him overnight. If you're wondering why the track is wet, uh, just before we came on air, it's been watered down with a Bowser because the, the dust is a big issue here today. And this is the battle up front. Thomas O'Raverty was having it all his own way, but Ian Lawler has got quicker and quicker in that Peugeot 208 in second place, the rally car. And he's closing down that lightweight uh, car of Thomas O'Raverty. The Corsa, as there they are, down through the hole in the hedge, a little bit wide for O'Raverty, but actually a late apex is what he's done there to try and get a better run onto the Joker lap. Crucial to get a quick run through the joker lap and to not get out of shape. He's managed to do it there. Oh, there's Smokey Car going through there. I think that's Jared Kinsler taking his joker lap. He's having a battle with that man, Quigley, in the focus. Be interesting to see where they come out. So there's our new leader because uh, the leader has jokered. So it's Lawler from O'Rafferty. As they come out onto the main straight. Great sound effects as they blast by here. That's three laps done. Lawler leads. There's Quigley in the focus coming out. That's uh, the Peugeot 206 of Sean Cullen. And Peter Roach coming up. First event for him at Modelo Park. This is the little Peugeot taking its joker lap. Probably a little bit heavy to be in, the, in this class, but it is a rally car class. So compared to that uh, car up front, but he's driving it beautifully, Lawler. And he's getting quicker, got quicker all day yesterday to the extent that he's putting the pressure on Thomas O'Rafferty. But O'Rafferty very quick in this one has now done his joker lap and leads. That puts Lawler back down into second place. It's Roach going through. The checkered flag is prepared below us, and it's a win for Thomas O'Rafferty. Second place for Ian Lawler in the 208. I think Quigley's going to take third. Indeed, he is. There he is, the top of your screen, coming out of south side. Motor Factory's corner, and then sideways stuff behind him from the spectacular Jared Kinsler in the smoky little Opel Corsa. Next up should be Sean Cullen. Here he comes in the little yellow 206. He wasn't racing with us yesterday, so just really getting settled in. And then 900 is Peter Roach, and he will complete the order. Next up on track is the one you've probably tuned in to watch. It's the supercars. So Rally cross car, car, cross car is ready to go. 
Harris on the left of the electric Mini and watch it go off the line. EV Power versus Subaru and Brett and the electric car out drags the two Subarus on the run down to Rally Cross. One distinctive whine from that car as it goes by. Jake Harris has been driving it beautifully all weekend. Incredible amounts of torque. Four wheel drive goes a little bit sideways, but no gets it corrected and gets on the power again and just drives away. This is great stuff from Jake Harris and the little electric mini. First electric uh, rally cross car we've had up on Dallas Park. First electric supercar we've had up on Dallas Park. And as you can see, it's a very cold bit of a Jake Harris now leads, but begins to extend his lead. Gets a turn in, up onto that inside curb. He's had a few small problems with the car. There was a problem with the water cooling system, which cools the batteries on Friday. They fixed that. And then he had a little bit of a problem with Derek Toll in terms of a territorial dispute. Damage the wishbone. Oh, gets it out of shape and goes a little bit wide. That won't help his times. Of course, your heats in Rallycross are all about your time for the three laps and the four laps because you've got that's what gives you your place on the grid for the all important final. And with the new regs uh, matching the UK regs, now you don't score any points in heats. You only score points in the final. But. Uh, a lot of the drivers aren't too happy about that. Also, you uh, get randomly selected for your first heat grid position, and your second heat is the finishing position of the first. So if you get a bad uh, grid position pulled out of the bag, uh, you're not going to get a good first heat. That has you on the back foot for the rest of the day. Whereas they used to have one at the front, one at the back. Look at Michael Morris in the background, drifting the Subaru around. I was talking to him this morning, and he said he can hold his head high on the main straight now. He can stay with the quickest of the supercars, all but. But it's now down to brakes and suspension, so he's going to take the big Brembo brakes off the front to put them on the back and put even bigger ones on the front. So these guys never stop working on these cars, never stop developing them. And he was looking at his paperwork during the week when he was putting his entry in, Michael, and he says that he logbooked his first Subaru Rallycross supercar in 2003. So he's been racing these cars for 20 years at Mondello Park. Says he never got sense, that was his quote, but obviously he's learned and learned and learned because that car is quick, but nothing he can do about the power of this electric mini. My energy car goes by, brakes pretty early. Not sure how it is in terms of weight compared to the other cars, but certainly in terms of performance, it's very, very quick as everybody else is finding out. And if you just tune in, yes, that is an electric mini leading a supercar race here at Mondello Park. Jake Harris, late apex is the answer there. Gets into the inside for the Joker Lab. Drifts it beautifully. It's nicely balanced and well sorted as well. Through the left, through the right and through the left again. And then uses that wave of EV torque to just blast the car out of the Joker Lab and across towards Rally Cross 3. Track drying out already, even though it's just been doused in water to keep that down. Michael Morris again, bouncing and drifting the Subaru around in the background, having a real go. And uh, Andrew Morris next up, but Michael Morris uh, the stronger of those two. Checker flags being prepared below us. And the electric mini takes a win at Mondello Park. Jake Harris, Michael Morris going to take second in the Subaru and Pretz and the similar car of Andrew Morris in third place. There's your, uh, your graphic for that one. Jake Harris takes the win of the BMW Mini Clubman. Michael Morris in the Impreza and Andrew Morris third in the Impreza. Next up, more supercars at Mandela Park.
repairs being done to the track there. Had that a lot all weekend. If the tyres get moved at all, the officials are very uh, safety conscious and they want them back where they're supposed to be. Especially that happened to the Joker top just a little bit. They've got to go back in the Joker lap where they were purely because uh, to make times comparable and to make it uh, equal for everybody involved. So a tyre wall just being readjusted there. Shouldn't take too long. We've been doing it all weekend pretty quickly and then we'll be ready to go with the next grid which is going to be uh, Oven, and I think, and Power Ryan and uh, Garrett and Dunne, who we'll see when they, when, they, when they come around who's on that grid. So apologies for this delay, as we said, just uh, track just being repaired a little bit around the outside. Always an issue in rallycross with cars glancing off tyres and moving tyre walls and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, good stuff. We'll get that done and we'll be racing in just a minute's time. What's up? Continental Tires, Irish Compact Car of the Year 2023. It speaks for itself. The new Opel Astra.
quick commercial break you might have seen the uh, the rally experience there on the uh, on the ads in that commercial break that's actually uh, got to be upgraded quite a lot of Mandela Park they've just uh, purchased not one not two but three UK uh, British Rallycross Championship Suzuki Swifts they'll be converted to rally spec and they'll be the cars we'll be using here at Mandela Park in the rally experience which uses a lot of the rallycross track it uses rallycross one to get the cars out of shape it uses some of the rally sprint track and talk of a new track for that experience so you don't need a competition license to do that you can just go on to Mondello Park.ie and book yourself a voucher to come down have a go at that so uh, it's definitely worth doing but anyway back to rally cross because we're about to go one more time there's the grid for this one gary donahue on pole position based in america commutes to mandela park to do a bit of rally cross why wouldn't you tristan oven and very very quick all weekend yeah a little bit of a, a few issues i think yesterday morning i didn't get to speak to him but certainly by yesterday afternoon he was absolutely flying watch out for him power ryan on the outside in the uh in the home-built uh, Mitsubishi. It's a cold, it's got the front panels from an Evo on it, but it's a, it's a Mitsubishi cold shell. It's starting to go very quickly. It looks, uh, looks like it's a real handful, but Power Ryan well able to drive that car. And then uh, Andrew Morris on row two. Sorry, it's not Andrew Morris. We're on board for the first time this weekend with Oven, and then great stuff, and away he goes. That's what it's like to get off the line of supercar ahead of everybody else. We're all now leading down into Rallycross one live on Mandela Park. Great stuff to see what the acceleration's like in a supercar. Look at this, up through the gears, hard on the brakes now, down into the hole in the hedge. No use of the handbrake, plenty of lock, and then standing on the bar, straightening it up. Another gear as he heads across Rallycross 2 in the Goody Demolition car. This is great stuff from Ovenden now to the right-hander again. That onboard shot, fantastic sideways stuff from Dunahoo trying to stay with him. Ovenden looks quite composed. Fourth gear through there, down to third on the brakes. You can see the gear indicator through here in third gear, up onto the inside curve, and then drifts the car out. Dunahoo goes in a little bit too hard goes sideways and is going to be passed I think by Power Ryan on the straight very aggressive sound from Power Ryan's car a lot of understeer for Ovenden's car there at the uh, start of Rallycross 1 but I think a lot of them are set up I think that's a puncture on the Dunahoo car that uh, sent him understeering off the track it looks uh, very ungainly there Power Ryan doing well isn't he hanging on to Tristan Ovenden in that little uh, Mitsubishi Ovenden bounces across Rallycross 2 there let's see his lap time when he goes by this time let's see how his times compared to that of uh, Leonard and Toll when he gets to the end of the heat. Oh, leaving a black mark there on the outside of the track as he gets the power. And not too far away is Power Ryan. This is a great performance by Power Ryan. 36 9, as quick as anybody over and goes through there. 37 6 for Power Ryan. He really is getting closer to the factory built supercars in terms of pace every time he brings that car out here at Mandela Park. He's had a lot of hardship with the car and I know he thought about selling it but let's hope he doesn't because uh, not only is it great to watch it's getting faster and faster every time he comes out on track but uh, Tristan Ovenden really stretching his lead out here. The Citroen C3 hard the brakes again. We were on board with him there a moment ago up onto the curve takes this corner in third gear drifts it beautifully a four wheel drift out onto the main straight at Mandela Park and then up through the gears. You might think that's braking relatively early, but they're carrying massive speed down the main straight towards Rallycross 1 here, the supercars. Now the battle's on. Power Ryan and Dara Morris absolutely together. Morris having a look down the inside, out of our shot into Rallycross 1. He gets down the inside. There's contact. Power Ryan sits around the outside, stays on the power. They're coming down towards the whole edge. Ryan gets the door closed, but I thought Morris was going to push the door back open there, but he didn't. This is a good scrap between these two now. Two home-built cars. Nothing amateur about them. They've got great uh, drivers. They're very well developed. 
but they are certainly are not factory built supercars. Great to see as Ovidan drifts out of Southside Motor Factory's corner and blasts down to take the checkered flag. And let's see what his time is 239.092. That is faster than anybody except Derek Toll as Pa Ryan takes second place. So that's the second fastest qualifying heat we've seen in supercars today. Toll still quickest on a 237.358, but that's quicker than Mick Leonard, it's quicker than John McCluskey, and it's quicker than Julian Godfrey. So good stuff, and that is indeed a puncture on that car. Off Donahue, unfortunately, but an easy fix, hopefully, when they get back there. So Tristan Ovenden takes the win, and just about for second place is Power Ryan ahead of Dara Morris. So Derek Towell, IRL1, the Irish champion, double European champion, former British champion on pole position. Michael Leonard, the entertainer in the centre of the front row. Potentially the quickest man here around a lap, but uh, always right on the edge. It tends to put wheels off and kick up dust and stuff like that, but I think his day will come. There certainly is, a, is an outright win in Michael Leonard because he's very, very quick. Uh, Julian Godfrey, massively experienced. Didn't have a great day here yesterday. Certainly having a better day today. There's a lot of talent on this grid. John McCluskey, JMC, back to Rallycross after a long break. And of course, the people's champion, Tommy Graham, 727 in his new car. First time he's ever raced left-hand drive. Frank Smith's company, FJS Plant, a local company here who are very much involved with Mondello, backing Tommy this weekend. The revs are up. The supercars are about to go. It's Leonard who gets the jump. No, Toll gets it as they head away, just about. And McCluskey puts it down the inside of Leonard. Leonard shuts the door, goes sideways. McCluskey has to back out of it. We're teammates, Mick. And Tommy Graham goes very wide. Leonard launches it down the inside of Julian Godfrey, who closes the door and says, I don't think so. Leonard will surely, no, he doesn't joke right here. McCluskey does. Leonard would prefer the scrap. So it's Toll. It's Godfrey and it's Leonard now, one, two, three, absolutely together. Through the uh, really quick left hand around to Rally Cross 3. You can see some of the IRX mediates. Even Leonard's car is gone. Look at the front right wheel on Leonard's car for the second time this weekend. There's a wheel off that car and around he goes. Around he goes. That's the second time that's happening. I think he must have maybe hit that bank. McCluskey stopped off track. Disastrous for Murray Motorsport. The two cars out early on in this one. They did make contact down into turn one. That was it, but uh, Leonard's car, both of the Murray cars stopped. That's such a shame. So Toll leads this one, but a resurgent uh, Julian Godfrey. Toll has been the man all weekend. Julian Godfrey, very, very quick here, sitting in behind him, and no problems for him at all doing that. Leonard, or Toll, will need to get away here. It looks like there'll be a red flag. Indeed, there is at the start finish line. Red flag, the race has been stopped. And Leonard's car in a precarious position there at the apex of Southside Motor Factors corner. Well, we did say it'd be exciting. No short of excitement. No shorting. Shut. No shortness of excitement when the uh, supercars are out there. Leonard's out of the car. Such a shame. Not sure if that's a legacy of the contact with McCluskey at turn one or was there contact somewhere else around the track with that front left? Front right, I should say. Text in from Mick Yo. Uh, he clipped the tires in Rallycross 3, we're told. So thanks, Mick. Uh, so Leonard clipped the tires down at Rallycross 3, second time this weekend. In fact, they're down there trying to uh, sort that out. Oh dear, oh dear. That's exactly the same spot where they repaired the car from yesterday. You can see the tape on it in the Nace Court Hotel car. And Murray's no doubt will get that car. They'll be looking for that car back really quickly, try and get it going again. But uh, a little bit of contact for Leonard there. It's a shame. He showed incredible pace this weekend, but had a number of. Uh, instances so the others will get a restart godfrey will have another chance to have a go at derek toll tommy graham will also be on the grid but uh john mccluskey car is gone and we won't see that car leonard's out in this heat i'm sure we'll see it out in the next heat. he's just having a look himself i'm sure it's a well easy for me to say but i'm sure that's a relatively easy fix for the guys at murray motorsport
So it looks like it's going to take us a couple of minutes uh, to get that car lifted and back uh, to the Murray Motorsport garage, and after which I'm sure it will be fixed extremely quickly. But while that's being done, we're just going to go to a quick commercial break. <laughs> Now we're here with Tristan Novand and we're just going to have a quick word with him while we have the break. Uh, Tristan's one of our Five Nations BRX competitors who's joined us for this weekend. Um, Tristan, um, how's it going so far this weekend? Really good actually. We had a great day yesterday until the final. We had a bit of contact, lap and a half before the end, uh, so we didn't finish unfortunately out of the lead, which was, which was a real shame. But overall we're happy with the performance. The car's been good, it's been quick. And uh, you were saying in your video that you did during the week that you were really looking forward to coming here, that you really like coming to Mondado Park. Yeah, we do. It's really good. And it's, it was the scene of our first ever supercar win this time last year um, on the Saturday. So it was it's a special place now forever. And we got a bit of uh, onboard footage there. It's the first onboard footage we've had all weekend showing just what it's like to drive a supercar around this tight Mondello Park track. Unfortunately, uh, the heat got to it, so the heat must be getting to you in there as well. Yeah, I don't think about it, honestly. <laughs> You'll probably notice there's plenty going on to distract you from the heat. Yeah, it, it looks like a very busy car to drive. Yeah, they really are. There's a lot going on. It may only be a short lap, but you're changing gear every straight, two, up two gears, down two gears, brake turn, watching what's going on. Yeah, it's busy. And um, how do you feel about the way the season has gone so far from you? This is your second event so far. Uh, yeah, quite good. We, the, the competition was really fierce at the opening round in um, at Lydon. The entry was really strong, so we. But we were happy with where we were, you know, with what we're running. We, th we thought we did pretty well. Uh, so this weekend we're here to build on that. And the aim, I presume, is the championship. <laughs> that is always the aim. <laughs> Get there. Okay. Well, well done. Thanks very much, uh, Tristan. And good luck for the rest of the weekend. Great, thanks very much. All right. Well, uh, we pan back up to Leo. I don't know how they're doing on track at the moment. Uh, whether they're ready to go or not. If we hand back over to Leo for the moment, and I'll see if we need to. I'll see if I can find anybody else to have a chat with. Are we off? I think it's
for the drivers. We can hear the fans running on the cars still, trying to keep the cars cool. The drivers staying in the cars, obviously trying to keep themselves cool as well with both doors open. We see Tommy Graham down here, first time out in a left-hand drive car, first time in his new Fiesta. We'll have a quick word with him, see if we can get in and have a, a word with Tommy. Tommy, how are you surviving in there in the heat? It's all right, it's okay, yep, yep. Nice and cool. Just grand and relaxed. And are you enjoying this new car? I'm enjoying it. Yesterday we had, we had a few launch control issues. It's my first time ever in left-hand drive. Uh, and so does that make much of a difference? It does. Uh, going into Rally Cross 3, I clipped the tyres a few times. Um, but it's good today, so I'm, I say I'm lying fourth or fifth, so it's okay. And the competition is hot as well as the weather? Well, all the guys in front of me and, and a lot of them behind me are equally as quick, so it's, so it's close racing, it's good. Start's the most important thing really, isn't it? Especially when you're sitting on the second row of the grid here. Yeah, but I can watch what's going on ahead of me and just I take my chances. Okay, well, good luck, Tommy. We'll see if we can uh, move on forward up the grid here now and we'll have a, a word with another one of our visitors is Julian Godfrey, a man is well known, going to the wrong side of the car, a man who's well known for his, uh, for building cars in the last few years been doing a lot of driving as well. Julian, how are you finding it out there? Uh, pretty good. Uh, going much better today. Had a few problems yesterday and getting more used to the car now. So I feel more confident today and uh, hopefully my left hand get better. And if, if I'm correct, this is your second trip to Mandela with this car, is that correct? Uh, no, the first trip. Yeah, so is it much different from what you were here before in? Uh, yeah, it's a completely different style of driving. Um, it used to be Liam's car which you used to obviously drive very aggressively, and uh, I've just got to try and learn to drive that way, rather than be nice and smooth. And uh, what's the aim for today, then? Uh, the aim today is to try and well, finish first in the British, and try and win, win the overall, be nice. Oh, well, good luck with it. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. And the last man we have here, we've spoken to him already this weekend, but we'll go across and have a word with him again. The Irish Championship sponsor, Derek Towell, in the parts for cars.ie Fiesta. Um, looking very cool, calm and collected. Been through this many times before, having to sit and wait. Um, it's just a part of the job. Not usually in rallycross in this kind of heat though, Derek. Yeah, certainly not in Ireland. And uh, yeah, we've a little issue at the minute in, term in respect to the heat, but uh, yeah, we have to manage that through that, this heat and hope for the best. And um, how does this affect you having to sit here? Is it just, are you well able for it to just stay calm and carry on? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's no problem. Uh, it'd be nice to have an ice cream. <laughs> well, we try and organize that for you later. Might be hard to eat through the helmet. Oh, no. <laughs> a day like today, you get it in. Okay, um, and uh, what's the, you've one good start already. You've got to do it all again now. Y yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. You got off the line well. Uh, how many cars are left? There appears to be three still running. Right, okay, sure, look, we just wait and see, do our best. Okay, thanks Derek. Um, that's all from us down here on the grid. I don't know, we seem to be making a little bit of progress up on top, so um, we go and see if we can find anybody else down the pits to, uh, to have a word with, and then we'll hand back over to uh, Leo if possible.
Yeah, you never know who you might find around Mondello Park on a Sunday afternoon. We have Max Hart here, one of Ireland's top up-and-coming young racing drivers, currently racing in the Chinese TCR Championship. Max, welcome to Rallycross. How are you? It's, it's cool to be here. It's uh, definitely not something that I've ever even thought about doing, but after coming down today, it's really, really cool, really interesting, and uh, it's cool to see a good crowd here as well. Yeah, all racing drivers like going quick, and these cars, especially off the start line, they're certainly quick, aren't they? Yeah, frightening quick. Uh, it's it's re like watching that turn one, it's really good, and it's action packed as well. A bit of carnage in there, it's got everything you want. Uh, tell us about how your season's been going. Yeah, it, it's up and down, so I'm racing at McLaren as well in the UK, and that's been going really good for us. Uh, and then racing the TCR over in China, which has been quite difficult. It's a, it's a massive learning curve for me, uh, a brand new car. Uh, super hot there as well, which definitely makes it more interesting. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it. It's a cool, uh, cool task to have my hand at. And for anybody who doesn't know, what is a TCR? Uh, TCR is a touring car. So TCR, it's, it's a worldwide class of manufacturer-backed uh, series. So the likes of Hyundai, Audi, Lincoln Co, Honda, you've got all them in it. And, the cars are all they're all different brands but they're all the same so it's it's really close competitive racing okay well thanks max and good luck with the rest of the season both in china and in the uk cheers Vargas. yeah well, sorry for cutting you short there max but it looks like we're about to get going again the track is being cleared the vehicles are in those cars have been brought in from the grid the supercars so we'll have to wait and see whether they're going to rerun that one or not so in the meantime we'll hand back over to the uh, to the race commentary and uh, we'll see when we get going
Well, as we can see here, uh, the little incident earlier in the supercar race where Michael Leonard uh, got squeezed a little bit and connected with the barrier has caused us a little bit of a problem, which is going to cause a long delay here at the circuit. And um, we're here talking to Phil Lawless, the race controller, and this is just one in a long series of delays this weekend, Phil, isn't it? It is, yeah. Yeah, but this, this tends to happen always the fourth corner. I'll be trying to get the same space and it just gets a bit, a bit squeezed a bit and that, that's what happened. Just connect with the barrier and that's it. And the, it. and the fact that the damage is so bad this time, it's probably because of repeated connections with the barrier this weekend. Yeah, it has got a few hits this weekend and now the best thing to do is it's too bad so we're going to actually replace the barrier for safety. It's better to be safe. And what's involved in that? Because obviously it has to be very sturdy. It's got to go well into the ground, etc. We're going to remove the barrier completely and we have walls to put in place. We've big concrete barriers that they use on the same road they use in the motorways same exact same in the middle of a motorway we use them now instead so the barrier is finished with so the concrete and which like do you reckon the competitors care whether it's the barrier or the concrete wall does it make much difference to them no they don't care they're going to hit it they're going to hit it no they're okay and how is this going to affect your schedule now for the rest of the afternoon is, will anything have to change no we might have to look at the lunch break just shorten the lunch break so we see how we get on. We, 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 we just keep going. We keep at it. Hopefully, no more incidents. Yeah, it has been a, a bit bad. The, the uh, kind of dry conditions, people are going quicker. The incidents are a little bit more spectacular as well. Yeah, and the dust as well. The dust has caused some problems as well. So we'll, we'll get there. We're walking our way through it, and it's going well. It's going really well. I, I, say, I say hats off to the guys organising it because despite all the problems yesterday, we did get through everything. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we had a few incidents yesterday with a few delays. Um, but, but we got through it. The, the good crew, good group of marshals, they're all good at what they do, they know what to do, they're all experienced people. Okay, well thanks very much Phil. As you can see, over behind, they're still working away. Uh, the concrete that's going to go in in place of the barrier is there behind it. Large concrete bollards, similar to what you would get on a motorway. They're all going to have to be shifted into place. So this is going to quite, take quite a while. Um, we have all of the marshals here, we have the grid staff, we have the stewards, we have everybody here who's involved in the running of this getting stuck in and hopefully we'll get back up and running soon enough. For anybody who's uh, interested in getting a look then at some of the cars, this is a great opportunity to go over to the paddock and have a look around because there will be a bit of a delay here and it's likely that the lunch break when most people go for the wander is probably going to be very short this afternoon. So we'll continue to wander around the paddock if we can find anybody else to show you of interest uh, about the Rallycross Championship here, we'll be back very shortly. So there you go, uh, great stuff from the team here at Mondello Park, uh, the production team as well getting in there, it's great to see you and Fergus doing a great job, so just go down to see exactly what's happening. So as you can see, we're moving the coverage on here at Mondello Park, thanks to uh, the guys that see it live. We've got, uh, a, we've got a, we've got a live on board, we've got a roving reporter, we're going to have another look I think at a replay now of uh, what actually happened down there to see, because we've got everybody, the whole team, we've got Motorsport Ireland, uh, Stewart's uh, organizers. Here we come, supercars charging down into turn one. Toll in close. Oh yeah, that's what it is. It got a good kick. So Leonard and uh, Matluski coming together. That's Mick Leonard trying to close the door and uh, Matluski trying to open it. A little bit of a territorial dispute. It kicked uh, Matluski's cars right up on the inside there and pushed that barrier right in on the inside. We haven't really seen that happen before because it's on the inside of a corner, but that's what happened. Just got a good push. And as you learned there, listen to Phil Lawless and Fergus, it's all about safety here. Who can't go racing until everything is up to standard. So that might take a little bit of time, which is an absolute nightmare for the race directors. And of course, the drivers just want to get out there. But safety is paramount. It's got to be done correctly. And uh, we won't be going racing until that barrier is fixed. But the Modelo Park operations teams here as well, they do a great job. We can see some of the guys there who, uh, who work here day to day at Modelo Park and they're getting involved in this one. So it will be fixed. It's just a matter of how long it might take. So uh, meanwhile, we'll go to a quick uh, commercial break while the guys are working away there, and we'll be back at Mondello Park in just a few minutes' time.
Versus IRX races this weekend is the arrival in Ireland for the first time of an all-electric uh, rallycross car, and the driver of that is Jake uh, Jake Harris here uh, with us. So we're going to have a quick word with Jake. Jake, you have moved over from a Citroen to this car. What's what's it like to change from one to the other? Uh, it's definitely a learning curve. Um, uh, yeah, quite quite a bit different. So it's taken us a bit of time to get used to it. Um, with no gears, so no engine braking. It's a it's a different way to brake and control the car but i will say handling wise it it, it handles nice it uh, it's a quick it's a quick machine so uh, just getting the settings on it and uh, getting quicker and quicker with it it's a uh, it's it's a beast of a car yeah <laughs> and long term when you get this sorted out do you see this as a race and championship winner and do you see other drivers going the same way i hope so and i i think eventually uh they, it, it will have to go that way so uh we we I suppose we're ahead of the curve a little bit with, with doing this, but uh, um, yeah, I think it is the future, so uh, I believe so. And then in terms of your own performances and the results that you've, you've achieved, have you started to get to where you were in the Citroen with the Mini at this stage? Yes, I, th I think possibly a little bit quicker. Um, the first round, not so much. It took a lot of uh, toying with. The settings weren't quite right, um, and we were a bit off the pace. But uh, through testing uh, here on Friday and yesterday, we've managed to up the pace on and on. And uh, yeah, I think I think we're in a good a good position now. We've got quite a bit of pace with it, and hopefully we can get quicker and quicker. Okay, well, thanks, Jake. Jake is the man who does the driving, but I'm told that the man who knows more about the car technically is Steve. Uh, Steve, you're a little bit more old school in some of your cars, which are RS200, which a lot of people would love to see something like that here. Yeah, it's a, it's a famous old car, and we've got a G4 Escort as well. So, but at the moment, we're, uh, we're pumping the RS200 around the country, so it's good. Well, when you're not driving that, you're looking after this electric car. And uh, can you tell us a little, about, a little bit about it technically? Yeah, it's got one motor in the front, two motors in the rear, and the passenger side is the full battery pack. So it's got inverters that run the motors. It's very electronic adjustable. So nearly everything, like a Tesla, you can adjust rear power, front power. It's got diffs in there as well. So you can swap and change all types of things, launch control into different modes and power to the front diff and rear diff. Could the driver have control of any of this while he's driving, or does it all have to be set before he goes out? Uh, it, we normally set it before we go out, but if the conditions change, he can adjust it inside the car if he's brave. And uh, this is the big motor in the front. It's obviously sitting down lower as well than your uh, engine would normally be. You don't have all the weight that you normally have in the front. So has it meant a whole new approach then to set up? Yeah, it's a new approach. We've had to put bigger brakes on it, obviously, because there's no down change braking on it it's got two motors in the back as well so the whole thing is a really different setup it's a very low center of gravity which works obviously with race cars very well but it is quite a bit overweight and in terms of power then compared to the other cars how, what is it developing and is there anything now or planned to be any sort of equivalency between the two of them no, there's no real plan really. We can throw out about 650 brake horsepower maximum if we need it. But the thing that gets it off the line and out the corner is the uh, Newton torque. So it, it's over a thousand Newtons of torque, which is the instant off the line power when we get the launch right. And um, just for people who are listening who don't know much about torque, uh, how would that compare to your ordinary road car maybe, or even to one of the other uh, four wheel drive supercars that are here? 
Well, it's just instant. As soon as you launch, you hold the button in and the brake on to launch like the other cars do. But we've just got instant power off the line where they have to, they've got anti-lag systems. That's the popping and banging that everybody loves you here. We haven't got that. We've just got instant power, but maybe too much wheel spin. So that's the bit we have to control because you can just sit there making smoke and not going anywhere. Yeah, it sounds like a, a huge challenge. When we come over to here, there was a, uh, there was a lot of noise from the engine um, and you were going through a charging uh, process. So uh, how does that work with charging of the car? Well, the charging is quite good. We've got our own little three-phase pack that we use. So we can get it charged in about an hour between heats. But we will probably do 12, 14 laps on the same charge if we needed to. But we try to keep as much power into the batteries. That when we plug the charger in, Obviously, it makes heat in the batteries. So the battery is cooling with a, a res fluid that pumps around the batteries and a different fluid that pumps around the motors that tries to keep everything as cool as possible. So the noise you heard was the fans from the radiators, just like a normal supercar, but it's keeping the batteries cool and the motors cool instead of the engine. Very good. Now, Jake, obviously, you've got a lot of this stuff driving around underneath you and it's led to a historic event yesterday in so far as you were the first person ever to win a race in Ireland in an electric car how does that feel yeah it's a good feeling uh, I, uh, I didn't actually know that when I when I took the win well uh, I know there's been some other uh, electric cars in the in the British that we had in the first round uh, so uh, yeah that's that's a great feeling uh, to be to be first, I suppose, so in, in history, so uh, and a race win. Yes, yeah, good. Well, well, well done. Thanks very much to both of you for all the information on the car. Well done to you, Jake. Good luck on the rest of the weekend. And um, obviously, this is the future. This is the way we're going to be going in. Maybe not in the near future, but eventually, this is the way a lot of rally cars, rally cross cars, and race cars are going to go. So really interesting to see what's going on with this electric car. And well done to Jake on his first ever electric car win yesterday.
Well, ladies and gents, we can only apologise for this delay, but uh, safety is paramount at Mandela Park. Now, uh, everybody is happy with the repairs that have been done. It took a while, but worth waiting for, definitely, especially into that high-speed turn one. So uh, it's been deemed as being perfectly safe, and apparently we're uh, live in five. <laughs> Ironically, we're live now, but we will be... Uh, we will be back, and we've got some retro rallycross coming very, very shortly, as you can see them lined up there. A variety of very, very different cars, including Joe Cahill's little mini there uh, that evokes memories of rallycross in Mandela Park back in the 1970s and 80s, of course, a space frame mini. That one powered by a Vauxhall engine. We'll go through them when they come up to the grid, but we will be racing very, very shortly here at Mandela Park. Well, we're back, we've got cars in the grid and we're going racing. It's uh, modified, I think it is next up. I'd assumed it was retro, it was changed around a little bit. Uh, Phil Chicken in the Citroen C2. It's gonna start on pole position with Joe Cahill in that iconic little rallycross mini in the center of the front row. Gave trouble yesterday, I spoke to Joe this morning. Uh, traced eventually after hours, he said to a wire at the back of the battery. And then George Toll in the uh, BMW Compact, very quick car in a straight line. This will be an interesting one. Rear wheel drive BMW should get the jump here, I suppose. Away they go, it's pretty equal. Oh, big black marks on the BMW and chops across the bows of the two front wheel drive cars. Perfect start that time from uh, George Toll. And hangs the tail out to celebrate as he gets on the power of the parts for cars. 
BMW compact leads on the way down to the hole in the hedge. Phil Chicken locking the rear wheels there as he tries to close them in on the brakes. And Joe Al chucks the little Mini in behind them. And uh, the diff doing its job and the Mini wandering all over the road. Phil Chicken takes the Joker lap, trying to get a quick laps in early on and uh, make some progress, maybe have a go back at the BMW. So here comes uh, George Toll and the BMW Compact. He used to share this car, Pierce Brown. Haven't seen Pierce out in the car in a while, although he did see him in the paddock this morning. Very, very sideways there is uh, Toll. Joe Cal, there's the little Mini. Look at his hands on the wheel. Look how hard he has to work at the wheel and the Mini to keep it in some semblance of a straight line there as that lid if, uh, does its work. But he's not losing much time to the big BMW up front. Wouldn't have a lot of power. Uh, gearbox pretty standard on that car. He was telling me that he'd love to get a race box with proper ratios, make it a little bit quicker. But he's talking about building a new Mini perhaps for next year. Of course, it'll be a Mini with the surname Cahill, Eugene Cahill, and Joe Cahill are synonymous with Minis. Oh, just as I gave him the. Maybe I gave him the curse of the commentator there as he just goes in behind that beacon sign. Obviously a problem for the Mini and heading back towards the paddock. Such a shame as Toll powers his way out onto the main straight once again. Big commitment as he chucks that BMW in. He's been driving it for many, many years. Well used to it. Seasoned Rallycross competitor. Would have competed in a Chevette many years ago. Now parts for cars.ie compact and a nice late turn in there to get that uh, joker lap line and a nice wide one here almost out to the edge of the circuit to try and straighten it up so you can do your break your uh, breaking in a straight line but in fact phil chicken has done enough and shoots in front of the uh, parts for cars great shot there you can see him coming across the top of the screen so the c1 assumes the lead Good drive and good use of the joker. I'll have a lot of understeer in the little Citroen, but he gets on the power nicely right out to the outside. Great stuff from Chicken. George trying to chase him down. Just two cars left in this one. Chicken coming down towards the checkered flag now. Powers across the line. 258.444. Fast lap of 40.991. 41.596. George Soul's fastest lap and comes across the line. Three seconds behind the flying Phil Chicken. Some more modifieds next up. Well, there's the grid on screen. Kieran Curran is going to start this one on pole position. The Newbridge man, the Newbridge man, been going well all weekend. Dale Singleton, very, very quick in the Ford car. Brian Sexton uh, wasn't out in this car yesterday. Brian Sexton, massively experienced, very successful saloon car race driver, time attack, former champion, and has uh, been in rallycross for the last season or so in this modified uh, Irish touring car machine. They've lightened it down, softened it, and raised it up himself for Brent Hughes and made it. Uh, competitive, but there's some very, very quick cars around it today. Watch out for Stanley Bovell and Peter McGarry on row two. Very much danger, man, but Singleton could get away here. He showed great pace, and Kieran Curran were right on it all weekend. I don't know if Brian Sexton's car will be able to match these other ones. Maybe he'll make the difference up. Let's wait and see. We're getting ready to go. They dropped the clutch, and a great start for Brian Sexton, but look at McGarry. Look at McGarry. 
Kieran Curran nails the whole shot, as they say in bike racing, and it's him that leads down into turn one. And uh, just to prove me wrong, Sexton, uber defensive in second place, and closes in on Kieran Curran. Great stuff from Sexton, and tries to have a go at Kieran Curran down into the hole in the hedge. He's still in second place. Singleton takes the Joker lap, and that could be interesting later on. That'll come back into play because first three pretty close together. Sexton bouncing the car around on its bump stops through the right hander there, trying to get up to the back of Kieran Curran. He's managing it too. It's a good performance from Brian Sexton in the Corolla. Cox, the inside rear wheel there as he gets over that inside lane. Surely the Volvo will be able to dispose of the Corolla in a straight line, or maybe not, as they come out on the main side. No, there's nothing wrong with that Corolla at all. They must have been twiddling with it. Great stuff. I can almost see the big smile under the beard from Brian Sexton here. He'd be loving this one. Kieran Curran doing nicely, though. Center of the road. Very experienced rally crosser. Sexton down the outside. Looking to get a better run on the way out. He's matching the course at inch for inch here. As they come across Rallycross 2 and head for Rallycross 3. Turns a nice late apex there for Curran. Oh, very sideways stuff for McGarry, and that costs some time. And they've all got to do the joker lap, remember, and Singleton has already taken the joker lap. We watch the lap times carefully. Fastest lap at the moment. Oh, we'll, just, well, we'll wait till they go across the line for a flying lap. Curran. Sexton again. Sideways stuff from Sexton. He's so committed when he chucks that car in down there. Kieran Curran, 40 points, eight fast lap, 40 dead for Singleton. So Singleton, a danger man here. They've got to take the Joker lap, and I think Singleton will be right up with them. Now, there we go. The leader takes it. Sexton doesn't probably feel he's a little bit quicker. Watch the back top of your screen here. Here comes Singleton. Here comes Curran. It's going to be very close. Singleton's through. Is he effectively leading this race? Quite possibly. Some of the media staff, the IRX media staff down there below us. Having to use the lens cap we see to keep the dust off the camera. The very, very dusty at Mandela Park today. Brian Sexton just uh, agreeing with me as he flicks the wipers on to clear the window. Oh, great stuff from Sexton. Just flings the car in down into Rallycross 1. He'll be absolutely loving this one and staying in front of Peter McGarry. Brian Sexton, fastest lap, 39.891. Proving me wrong, wrong, wrong from my predictions of this one. Great stuff. There's this battle now. Are they going to get across ahead of Brian Sexton? They might just do, but it won't. It'll be tight. Sexton a little bit slow through the Joker, and that cost some time. And Curran having a real go. It's one, two, three, four, five together still in this one. What a heat absolutely fantastic stuff offline in the background as McGarry trying to get by Sexton but Singleton is sideways in the Ford car take the checkered flag off Ian Beattie and let this one run for a few more laps sideways stuff in the Volvo what a drive from Singleton he's going to take this one Curran right with him Sexton the absolute entertainer in that one then it's uh, Peter McGarry right with him and Stanley Bovel there too fantastic stuff Kieran Curran with fastest lap on the final lap uh, 39.658 so what a drive from Singleton, Curran right with him. Sexton impressing us a lot, and McGarry and Bovel right in there too. That's great rally cross action here at Mandela Park. Just what we want to see. There's the graphic with your uh, results on it. Singleton, Curran, Sexton, McGarry, and Bovel the order.
Are we getting ready to go again? Modifieds. Here they come back down towards us. And there's our grid. Jason Bleasdale on pole position, unbeaten, and in fact nobody near him all weekend in this class. Darren Bleasdale in the second identical car. He's had clutch trouble this weekend and uh, hasn't been able to manage him. And then the crowd favourite is Slavomir Veloch on the outside of the front row in that BMW M3. It looks heavy, it looks ungainly. Just wait a minute. It's very, very quick around Mondello Park. It's being beautifully driven and it's highly entertaining. John Ward in the uh, VX220. John Ward, one of the quickest guys around in Irish Rallycross and uh, getting used to this car. He's had terrible trouble with it. He had uh, two drive shafts let go last time out. Didn't get any running at all. It ran very well yesterday though. And uh, he's just, they're just beginning to twiddle around with himself and his father, Eugene, and try and get the settings a little bit better to close the gap. Then on the outside of row two is Willie Coyne, former Irish Rallycross champion. And uh, let's see if he can have a go at these supercars, more or less, with the uh, little Nova. Away goes the two please. They'll shot Ward, though, up to the second. The BMW gets up to third, because the BMW gets a cracking start. Look at this for the M3. Up to second place and powering its way out of Rallycross one. Trying to be as lazy on the brakes. Oh, Bleasdale down the inside of John Ward, a cracking move there. Absolute lunge down the inside and taking that third place away. That was Darren Bleasdale. So Jason Bleasdale away. Darren Bleasdale trying to get onto the back of the M3 now. We know how quick the M3 is just through this section here. Watch as he just pulls a length or two there. Very, very quick. And if he can get a tidy exit here, it's very quick in a straight line. Yeah, that's not too sideways. Vauxhall's a little bit better in traction out of there, perhaps. Then Willie Coyne next up. So it's Jason Bleasdale. It's Volokh, it's Bleasdale, then it's going to be Ward. It's Willie Coyne and John Ward. John Ward having taken the joker lap, of course. Oh, a big move down the inside goes wrong there as uh, Darren Bleasdale launches it down the inside of the BMW and gets it wrong. So great stuff in uh, second place. As Bleasdale recovered, Coyne up to third now. John Ward having taken his joker lap in fourth. Surely the second Bleasdale car should be coming sometime soon. Don't see it there. Nobody touching Jason Bleasdale. 36 6. That's uh, supercar times he's been doing all weekend here as John Ward goes through. There's the BMW. Getting a nice line there for his Joker lap. You can see the BMW in the background going left, right, left again. That's Willie Coyne going with him and they get out ahead. BMW gets out ahead of John Ward. That should ensure him of second place, I would imagine. Then it's Coyne. Then Bleasdale. But Jason Bleasdale untouchable out front as he has been all weekend. On the brakes down at the hole in the hedge. Car's just so well sorted. He drives it beautifully. Back at the car, grips a little bit of hopping, but he controls that really well. There he goes to take his joker lap, but that's not going to change anything, I don't think. There's a good battle out of shot next up between uh, there just after John Ward. Here we go, and Bleasdale goes round the outside, but Willie Coyne says no way and goes back at him on the brakes. Tries to close the door and just gets across in front of him. This is a good stuff from Willie Coyne. It doesn't matter what place it is, Willie will never hand it away. Surely the Vauxhall will get it on the run to the line. We know who's going to win it, Jason Bleasdale. Volokh will be second place here. He comes in the BMW. John Ward right with him in third place. Who's going to be fourth? Can Willie Coyne fight off that Vauxhall as they come out of the final corner? Side by side, heading for the line now. No. Coyne can't quite do it in a straight line. But uh, so Bleasdale just about takes that one. Fastest lap on the wind to Jason Bleasdale. Volokh in second and third place in the M3. In second place in the M3. Ward in third place in the VX220. Then Darren Bleasdale just pipping Willie Coyne on the run to the line. Next up is Open Club Man. So open club man coming down towards us, missing a few cars from earlier on. Uh, we know the Nicole Drought 106 was uh, misfiring badly. I believe it's in component form up in Garage 24. Uh, Sean Purcell, Jonathan Files, Eric Holstein. A load of people are trying to diagnose the problem. They think they've found the problem, but uh, they won't get the car out for this heat because it's like a Meccano set up there. <laughs> Not a pretty sight, I believe. But uh, Nicole just wants to get uh, a finish in the final to try and protect her championship lead. So even though she's showing on the grid, she won't be out in this one. So Michael Duke on pole position, unbeaten all weekend. 
Then Derek Lenehan on the front row and Collie Lachlan in the Clio on the outside of row, of row one. Then Dale Wesson in the uh, Mini Cooper S JCW. Christopher Grimes Jr. in the Fiesta Z-Tech. We're missing Nicole Drought. We do have Brian Hutton. We're missing Colin Dowling, unfortunately. We see the car over in this paddock. He went very slowly in the first heat. And Michael Connell in the second of the minis who did free practice this morning, just did one lap and came back in. But I don't see the car in the paddock. Do I see it? Is it coming out? Or is it gone home? I'm not sure. That's a shame. Mikey Connell, one of the great characters in the paddock, who would have expected him to get out in this one, but I don't see it there. Uh, no luck, unfortunately, for him. This we get a lot of people having bad luck. Um, Nicole Drought normally out in the Clio in this class, but uh, using a 106 that she's borrowed, but it's giving a little bit of bother this weekend. They're trying to work, work that one out. But uh, meanwhile, Michael Duke, absolutely incredible stuff from him this weekend. He hasn't been beaten. Uh, Lenahan might give him a run. Let's wait and see. But Duke gets the nose ahead. Look at the Clio on the outside with 197 horsepower. He gets almost ahead of both of them, but I think Duke has done enough, and it's him down, uh, takes the lead. Lenahan right with him, though, on the inside. Collie Lachlan driven wide. That allows the Mini Cooper S to blast past him on the way and up to third place. It's the car they all fear in this class, the Mini Cooper S. They've got uh, oodles of power. They've uh, redone the suspension. They've loads of work to them. And uh, Dale West just getting used to it, really. He's not massively experienced in Irish Rallycross. He's done well there to get up to third place, though. And uh, Collie Lachlan taking the joker lap. So here they come back towards and Lenahan trying hard there to uh, hang on to the back of Duke. This is the first time we've seen the two of them together on track this weekend. And Lenahan with a great run on the way out there of uh, Southside. Looks like he can stay with him here. Deciding not to run in behind and moves it over to the inside and back to the outside. But I'm not sure if that's traction or power, but Duke uh, easing away there. Throwing the car in, West and right with him as well, with these two guys. Then a little bit wide, perhaps, on the exit there. Into second gear, get the cars turned in. Nobody taking the joker, just lap. In fact, Weston decides to take it, does he? Yeah, Dale Weston takes it. And it's Grimes in a little Z-Tech Fiesta. Lenahan's still hanging on. He's about half a second slower the last time around. I wonder, has he matched some this time? Both trying very hard. You can see by the body language of the car. Michael Duke right to the outside. So it's Duke and Lenahan now. Was 0.7 of a second. It's 1.5, so a 41.3. Let's put that to bed. A lot quicker than anybody else out there. He's been doing low, 50, low 41s all weekend here. So Weston has done his joker lap. Just blasted by Brian Hutton on the straight. And Collie Lachlan right behind those two. These two guys still have to do their joker lap. But Duke now just driving away from uh, anything Lenahan can offer here. Michael Duke. And Lenahan goes wide there. And that's going to cost him even more time on Rallycross 3. So uh, Duke it is. Right out to the curbs again. Low 41s. Very, very quick times. He goes by to start another lap. 41 and 9 that time round. 42 5 for Lenahan. Message in from Gavin Green in there who's watching the screen telling me to wish Derek Lenahan a happy birthday. He didn't tell me what age he was. Well, he did, but I'm not going to tell him. When you get to that age, you don't like uh, people mentioning your name. So, a very happy birthday to, uh, to Derek Lenahan from the rest of his Musketeers karting team from back in the day. Great group of guys that we knew when we uh, karted many, many years ago. Derek Lenahan, of course, from a motorsport family. His father, Frank Lenahan, top auto tester and uh, retro rallyist and still very much involved in Irish motorsport in the Trials Drivers Club for many years. So Derek kind of grew up in it right out to the outside. The checkered flag is prepared, though, and nobody touching Duke as he blasts across the line there to finish 47, including his joker lap. Then it's uh, Lenahan in second place. And it's Weston. Weston's best of 42.6. Then Lachlan, 43.8. 43.9 for Grimes Jr. in the Z Tech and 44.7 for uh, Brian Hutton in the Punto. But uh, Derek Lenahan there will be a little bit disheartened by that one, despite the fact that it's his birthday because uh, it just couldn't do anything about Duke, who just eased away. So pole win and fastest lap. It's becoming uh, it's becoming a regular thing for Michael Duke. There's the uh, the official result. The MR2 is incorrect on the right. Obviously, that's a Citroen Saxo that Derek Lennon is in second place in. Dale Weston in the Mini Cooper S. Collie Lachlan in the Renault Clio. Christopher Grimes Jr. in a Ford Fiesta. And Collie Lachlan in the Renault Clio.
Supercars back out on track. That's what a lot of people have come to see today. Good crowd in the grandstand, plenty of spectators in the paddock as well. This is where most of the excitement is, the UK supercars versus the Irish supercars, and the Irish supercar ranks have been bolstered by a load of new cars uh, lately. Tommy Graham there in row two in his new left-hand drive car. Michael Leonard in the centre of the front row. But Julian Godfrey's been going very quickly today. Obviously had some small issues yesterday. He's very, very quick. So we'll watch out for this one. Toll, Leonard, Godfrey on the front row. John McCluskey and Tommy Graham in row two. Well done to Murray Motorsport for getting their two guys back out. Sustained a little bit of damage in the last heat. The revs are up. You're about to see not to 60 in way under two seconds here from these guys. Way to go. Leonard gets the jump, but as he grabs second, it's Godfrey on the outside. Godfrey should be able to get across. He's too polite. Oh, Toa locks up and into the side of Godfrey and sends Godfrey off. And over goes Godfrey. A big roll. Oh, it's back on his four wheels with there's damage done there. And uh, Derek Toll locked up into the side of Julian Godfrey. Godfrey got, just got a tank slapper. Left, right, left, right. And uh, when he hit that famous bump on the inside of uh, on the exit of Rallycross 1, it just launched the car up and it caught on its left-hand side and barrel rolled. Julian will be absolutely fine. The car looks structurally okay, but that uh, he certainly won't take any further part in this heat. But that's an uh, absolute shame. Uh, maybe, uh, I don't know, Julian was ahead when he went by me, but... It looked like Derek locked up trying to avoid it, but let's, uh, we'll see a replay of that one, no doubt. He's out of the car, I think. Red flags are out, obviously, there. Ian Beattie holding out the red flag just to uh, get the red. They're all highly, highly experienced. They'll come back around to the grid and uh, line up again but of course that car will have to be removed and uh, there's julian out of the car fine won't be too happy about that i've uh, i de i would imagine but uh, there's the doctor and the rescue crew there dr khan they'll do some normal checks just to make sure he's fine it's a uh, procedure in any incident at all so yeah just make sure he hasn't had a any concussion or anything like that so a quick conversation Dr. Khan, massively experienced here at Mandela Park. He's been looking after everybody so well for many, many years, as indeed do the rescue crew. Watch them working around the car. They're very systematic. They've checked the battery. They've checked the internal master switch. They'll check the fuel tank. They've done it all already, and they're happy with it. Some of the marshals there are already Shane at the top of the screen. He was on the scene very, very quickly. They're so well trained. We have, uh, we've got great people around the track here. That car will have to be lifted back in, obviously, but the uh, main concern is, is about the driver, about Julian Godfrey. He's absolutely fine. Uh, the car perhaps not so much unfortunately and he'd been going so well today Julian Godfrey probably was he with was he the man that was going to take the fight to the quickest Irish cars in Derek's old perhaps but uh, very unfortunate whatever happened into turn one I'm sure it'll be it'll be looked into and uh, we should be able to get a replay at some stage as well and play that one back and have a look and we can make our own minds up but uh, the marshal's going to put down some uh, some mentals possibly there are probably some fluids under the car but uh, everybody doing their job to perfection you're very proud of these guys they do a lot of training and uh, they're really really good you just know you're in safe hands at mandela park when you're racing if something goes wrong So there's uh, Julian Godfrey's car being lifted up. 
Julian having a look around it just in case he could uh, get it going again, but I don't know. I think it's going to take a little bit of work and certainly a lot of setup and maybe some structural work to the roof, but he'll know better than me. I got that car back to his garage pretty quickly. Great job, well done to everybody involved. Marshall's already working away there. Some of the Mandela Park Ops Department with them, so fantastic stuff. And uh, we should be ready to go racing pretty quickly. And the cars are on the grid already. Michael Leonard, Derek Toll, Tommy Graham, and John McCluskey. Four very quick cars still to run. We'll just get that car, Julian Godfrey's back in, the Citroen. Such a shame, as we said, it was really starting to go well. We're going to have a quick look at what happened there as they came down into Rallycross 1 off the line. And here we go. The, the door is open. Toll launches it down the inside. Locks the rears. Can't really avoid contact. Can he? It, uh, Julian Godfrey almost hangs on to it. Keeps it pinned. But that's where it got him. That big jump. It's claimed many, many people on the inside of Rallycross 1 and the exit. And that's the car over and back. You could just see it going up it and as it left the shot and then back onto all four wheels. It came in the shot there. So... Uh, so you could see uh, Shane running towards it as well, the marshes before the car had stopped moving. So great work, uh, as ever, by the Mandela Park marshes. They're still down there, just putting down a little bit of cement dust. The idea being that that'll soak it up. Here we are again. That's McCluskey. That's Toll in front. He's locking up. McCluskey's locking up. Just contact with the rear quarter, very sideways then. And keep, look at the wheels spinning. He's still on the power. Julian's not giving up. Wants to keep going here. Left, left lock on. It probably should spin back. Does he touch, with, does McCluskey touch him here? I don't think so. Toll still on the power around the outside. And that's first bump upsets the car badly. Then it goes left. Watch this next one. This is the bump that has claimed many people. Up it goes there. Takes the weight off the car. And then flicks again to the left and digs in. And over it goes onto its roof. And that's what happened. That's such a shame. We really don't like seeing that in Mandela Park. I want to see uh, Julian Godfrey on the grid for the supercar final. And indeed uh, for the super final to try and challenge for the Irish Rallycross Grand Prix title. The first time we've ever had it at Mondello Park. So uh, I think we'll, that car is coming back. The medics are happy. Julian's okay. But uh, the car certainly, certainly isn't. So it's four cars for this heat now. We're going to see. It's Derek Toll, the multiple champion on pole position. It's Michael Leonard for the nice car to tell alongside him. It's JMC, John McCluskey on row two. And then it's T-Bone Tommy, the local man, the people's champion as he's known for the Graham Sand and Gravel and FJS plant is Tommy Graham. Never, ever discount Tommy Graham. He's a great competitor. He's very feisty and is capable of running with anybody else in this supercar. Remember, this is Tommy. He's been competing for many, many years. First time ever in a left-hand drive car. Got this car a couple of weeks ago, and uh, himself and Dominic McNeil, and they're, they're running it really well, but Tommy's still getting used to going around Mandela Park in a left-hand drive car. He's always preferred right-hand drive cars, but these more modern cars only come in left-hand drive, so Tommy's sitting on what he would consider the wrong side of the car for the first time. Okay, we're getting ready to go. Getting ready to go, great sound effects, the car's bouncing, oh Leonard it is this time, that didn't look healthy, Leonard's car looked like it stalled about five times with inside a second, I wonder did it break a shaft or something, certainly didn't look healthy, it's Toll, it's McCluskey and it's Tommy Graham now heading down towards the hole in the hedge, but I think we can see a red flag coming here, Leonard's car is absolutely stranded there, no effort to get it going, McCluskey takes the joker, no I'm wrong, he gets it started and gets going, Mick Leonard. Okay, well that was odd, look at the car sort of shuddered when it uh, should have gone off the line, but Leonard has fired it up and is away and ruined his day really in terms of a grid for the final. So it's Toll leading out onto the main straight, it's a sideways Tommy Graham next up, and it's John McCluskey who has already jokered. Toll flicks the car down into Rallycross 1. Always deadly, Derek is great fun out of the car, but always deadly serious when he's in the car and uh, tries really hard, trains hard, has a good team around him, and uh, is very, very hard to beat here at Mandela Park. Through the right-hander, staying off the gravel onto that uh, dry line. 
sorry, clean line, I should say. Obviously, it's a dry line, but a cleaner line with no gravel. You see that puff of smoke at the back? That's Derek giving a quick jab on the handbrake. He does that to rotate the car before the corner and then drift it out. Tommy Graham doing something similar, but Klusky drifting behind him. It's great to watch these supercars on the exit of Southside Motor Factory's corner. Toll bounces across Rallycross 1, and he's easing away again, really in a class of his own in this one. 36.5, oh, only two tenths quicker than Tommy Graham that time around. Takes his joker lap, Tommy doesn't, so Tommy assumes the lead. Now, but Klusky has taken the joker lap. Can he come out ahead of Toll? Here's Tommy Graham. It's going to be very, very close, and Derek Toll just slices in front of John McCluskey. I'll have that, John. Thanks very much. Kluski won't be happy with that one. Hard on the power up rally cross three now on the brakes down to second gear in these cars or third gear I should say and then grabbing gears as quick as they can on the run to the line. Here they come. Going on to the final lap now. John McCluskey can smell a win here. Derek Toll right on Toll's back bumper. This is good stuff from McCluskey. Tommy Graham still has the joker of course and he's doing that now. Sideways stuff from Toll. Sideways stuff from John McCluskey as well. Two very different angles of attack. Here comes Tommy but they're both going to leapfrog Tommy Graham Derek Toll beginning to inch away is he I think he's slightly well he's by a car length or two and McCluskey coming back at him on the run up rally cross three McCluskey slightly later on the brakes and wider to get a try and get a better angle on the way out but Toll doesn't make any mistakes Tommy's sideways in the background checker flag is ready below me it's Toll it's McCluskey and it's Tommy Graham so great stuff Leonard should be coming down here as well Leonard of course Michael Leonard being the entertainer has just done fastest lap of the race and he's uh, three tenths quicker than Toll. So we did say he's potentially the quickest man out here, but if, if there's drama, Mikko will be involved in it. He's great in entertainment, he's great to watch. We love him in commentary, they love him in the grandstand. And when the planets do align, Mick Leonard would be, there'd be a big win for him. But uh, the consistency is the thing. He's, he just gets himself in drama, he puts wheels off, but he's incredibly quick. And he's just shown us that again, despite that stall. Uh, he's done the fastest lap of the race at 35.928. Nobody else in the 35s here. So great stuff from Derek Toll. Even Ovenden in his heat, 36.5 is his fastest lap. So Leonard, blindingly quick, just needs to get it all together. And that'll be interesting because he would love, love, love. Can you imagine the party in the Nice Court Hotel if Michael Leonard won the Irish Rallycross Grand Prix? It'd probably go on for a week. The uh, nice uh, party venue that Michael owns and runs, family business. His dad down here as well, Michael Leonard, senior, well known to us at Mandela Park for many, many years. He uh, rallycrossed and raced and was always a great entertainer. Moving on to the next one, it's all four minis, and it's uh, Max Langmaid, who's won everything this weekend from pole. He's won all the heats and the finals, and he won the first heat earlier on this morning. Martin Hawks chased him down. Watch out for Andrew Hawks and David Bell, the four cars very closely matched. They should be getting ready to go shortly. Revs are up, we're getting ready to go. <coughs> well, Bell gets a good start from row two, but it is Langmade again who launches it. Hawks tucking in behind him. And in fact, Bell gets down the inside of uh, Andrew Hawks to take that third place, but there's already a gap there for the first two are away, Langmade and Martin Hawks. So carbon copy of heat one, Bell in third place. So uh, Martin Hawks trying really hard to hang on because Max Langway makes uh, always does a good first lap and that gets him away just a little bit. That's all four through and onto the uh, long uphill rally cross three. You don't really see it there, but that's a good drag uphill. Langway using all the curbs, usually a sign in motorsport that a driver is really trying in re circuit racing, especially here. Some of the rally cross drivers tend to avoid it, not so much. These two well ahead. It's two races of two now at the minute. Very little between them, just six tenths between the first two as they went across the line. Hawks trying really hard, late on the brakes now, trying to latch onto the back of Max Langmaid's car. Langmaid makes a good exit there though, and maintains his gap.
open just a little bit as they go by. Langmaid from Hawks. Langmaid goes through, stops the clocks at a 40.3. 41 dead for Hawks. That opens the gap to 1.347 seconds at the end of lap two. Andrew Hawks goes through, 43.7. Then Bell, having taken his joker lap, goes through as well. Second place man takes his joker, Martin Hawks. Through the chicane. Andrew Hawks takes it as well, so won't uh, come up a place there. So Lang made even further ahead now. The distinctive black and red colored car. Nice line up over the inside curve and out to the outside one there. well ahead I don't think this is going to alter anything left right and left yeah well ahead rejoins going to be another win as we said was unbeaten yesterday in the heats and the final it's looking very much the same today for Max Langmaid he takes the checkered flag Final lap actually by Hawks, maybe close that down just a little bit. But fastest lap to Lang made 40.333. It's 41.028, so seven tenths slower for Hawks ultimately in the fastest lap. Andrew Hawks goes through just ahead of David Bell for third and fourth position in the mini all four heat two on the second day of this uh, Parts for Cars Irish Rallycross Championship and Cooper Tires Five Nations Trophy British Rallycross Championship at Mandela Park. There's your official. Finishing order, Max Langmay takes the win from Martin Hawks, Andrew Hawks, and David Bell. Retro Rallycross next up being released from the uh, dummy grid there. Coming around the outside corner. Great entertainment yesterday from these guys. So Lee Wood going to start on pole, pole position in the Zack Speed Escort. Zack Speed lookalike looks fantastic. It really does, as we said yesterday, it evokes memories of uh, John Welch and Martin Shanker back here. Back in the day, it really well driven as well by Lee Wood. He's uh, on form this weekend and great to watch. Paul Pasco, very, very quick in heat two. David Crockett on the outside did most of the winning yesterday, but Crockett is very quick. He gets a great run out of south side corner, very quick in a straight line, but Paul Pasco seems every bit as quick, and that's why... Uh, Crockett from the back of the grid couldn't quite get by Pasco in the last heat. Then Vincent Bristow in the E46 BMW, very quick in heat one. Davey Aiken, always worth watching in the lightweight Nova in row two. Tony Lynch coming down in the MR2, the blue MR2, Mark one. And Steve Pasco in the Sierra Cosworth were missing uh, David Ewan, Jamie McBain, both who went very well earlier in the weekend. We haven't seen Jamie McBain today, but he was right up the front yesterday. Great uh, driving superbly and very entertaining to watch. So uh, what's going to happen here, Lee Wood will need to get away and he'll be hoping Pasco is in between himself and that flying Chevette because the Chevette, uh, very, very quick and very well driven. David Crockett's car from the RXNI, Northern Ireland visitor, comes to Mandela quite often. Great to have him here, huge entertainer. But uh, Lee Wood has beaten him on occasion this weekend. And Pasco right in the middle too, this should be a good one. Retro Rallycross getting ready to go. The jump is crucially important off the line. Sierra moved a little bit at the back. That's going to give us a false start. Don't they look great, the retro rallycross cars? Just memories, memories, memories if you were involved in rallycross back in the day here at Mandela Park. So Lee Wood it is on, uh, on pole, but uh, driver's just resetting everything. Marshall's pushing the Chevette back just a little bit.
looking like the Chevette jumped as well. So that could be a, a double joker lap for the Chevette. That's what they were doing with the supercars, is you take two joker laps if you, uh, if you jump the start, which effectively takes you out of the running. Might give us some more entertainment, but uh, that's a shame. So two cars jump at the start there. We saw the Chevette having to be pushed back at the Sierra at the back of the grid as well. Massive power in that Sierra at the back of the grid. Spun going off the grid, the grid there yesterday. Just got out of shape. That's how much power it has rear wheel drive. Talk of 500 brake horsepower. Lee Wood on pole. Can he get away? Great start from the Escort and the Chevette from the outside. The Cosworth gets left. Look at the BMW coming up the inside. There's contact in the back and contact in the front. Aiken is off on the outside. Just contact everywhere there. That's uh, Davy Aiken. Uh, that car is probably not as badly damaged as it looks because their fiberglass body gets on them, but it's not going to go any further here. So there was definitely a few, there were definitely a few territorial disputes off the line there. Uh, I wonder will we see a red flag? We surely will. The officials won't want to run a red flag because uh, we're really running late on time because of all this, but uh, I'm not sure with that car parked where it is. Yeah, the red flags are out. The race has been stopped. Red flags are out all around the track, so well done again by the marshals as soon as it came out on the radio. But in fact, that car driving away, which meant they probably could have, uh, they probably could have kept it going, but uh, safety is paramount, so better off make the decision early. So more waved yellows and a red flag for the retros, and uh, Lee Wood will have to do it all again now. Maybe we could uh, see that one again. And we go back and have a look at that one, which is uh, the, the track just been cleared with a little bit of grass and stuff on the outside here, but nothing as. Uh, as big as we had to clear earlier on, so great stuff by everybody involved. We should be back racing pretty shortly. The Aiken car is uh, going back into the paddock, I think. So the rest of them are already gridding up in their original grid positions. Might see it out again later on. And the BMW uh, E46 on the second row got a cracking start as well and got alongside Pasco in the, uh, but they were just really elbowing. There wasn't any harm in that one. But we'll see it all again because we're going to go racing in a couple of minutes' time. So the revs are up. Lee Wood, Pasco, Crockett on the front row. Crockett again with a great start, but uh, Pasco with a better one this time. Wood should be able to hang on, he's on the inside. And indeed he does, the escort leaves, but a switch back from the Chevette, and we know how much power the Chevette has on the rundown. Towards the hole in the hedge, so does Wood, and he closes the door, center of the road, and then moves across to the right in the braking zone, not letting that Chevette by, and Crockett decides to take the joker lap. That will not be the last we've seen of him. He will come back into contention towards the end of this one. Lee Wood knows that, and he gets the head down in the Zach Speed escort. Then the Sierra, the Escort Cosworth, the Pasco. Then it's Lynch. Oh, and that's uh, side side by side. There is, is that's, excuse me. That's Lynch and Bristow side by side. Bristow, no shortage of commitment. He was going to have a look side side by side up Rally Cross Three there, which we don't see very often. But he's keen to get that BMW ahead of the mark. One MR2. A lot of very different cars with very different characteristics. The BMW beautifully sideways there as he chucks it into Rally Cross One in his efforts to displace the Mark 1 MR2. They're both right behind Pasco in the Escort Cosworth. Bristol driving that car line. It's well set up, isn't it? It handles really well, that BMW. It doesn't really look like a race car, but it, uh, it works like one. It's fantastic stuff, and he drives it so well. Look at this again. Offline, doesn't care. Side by side, super brave. It's not the move of the weekend. It quite possibly is. That's not, <laughs> it's not a comfortable move, and he's just gone right round the outside. Uh, at the very, very end of Rallycross 3, and that's a fantastic move. Really impressive stuff as Bristol moves ahead of the MR2. It's great to see these retro cars having a go like this. And in fact, Tony Lynch going very wide, and that's probably settled that one. And I wonder, can Bristol have a go? I think he can at the Escort Cosworth in front. He's trying to close it down now, the little E46. There's our leader, Lee Wood. He's got fastest lap of 40.9. But uh, behind him now, here's Pasco. And there's uh, Vincent Bristow, who's really getting a go. Oh, he's thinking about doing it again. Once is enough, Vincent. But uh, this really is great to watch. Up he goes on the inside curve. But again, look at the balance of that BMW. Really does look good as it comes out. I think Pasco's car perhaps a little bit quicker in a straight line. But uh, Bristow having a real go here in third place. And again, a little bit of opposite lock as he uh, flicks it into Rallycross 1. Pasco having got away, but Bristow later on the brakes. 
closes them down in the BMW and gets on the bar nice and early. Doesn't get too sideways on the way out. And once again, he's within striking distance. Is he going to try his party trick here at Rallycross 3 again? He's close enough. He gets that traction off the corner. He tries the inside this time instead of the outside, but the escort has enough uh, power to stay ahead. I think it's Bristow, is it? It is. Bristow just does Pasco on the run to the line. Well, that's a cracking race. Uh, Lee Wood uh, takes it. Uh, Vincent Bristow, incredible drive from the man in that uh, Ford or BMW M3. Really, really good stuff from Bristow. And he's just uh, thumbs up. That's great to see from those two drivers. They both will have enjoyed that one. So really, really good stuff. Lee Wood taking the win there, but highly entertaining stuff from our UK visitors, our retro UK visitors. So the uh, bewinged box arch Mark II escort takes the win there of Lee Wood and uh, Vincent Bristow. Absolutely incredible stuff from him to charge up to second place with some novel maneuvers. There he is in the M3. Paul Pasco just losing out on the run to the line in the escort Cosworth. Then Tony Lynch in the sideways MR2 and Davy Crockett who must have had an incident off camera somewhere because I would have expected him to come back into the running towards the end. But highly, highly entertaining stuff from uh, the retros. That's uh, super retro from the British Rallycross Championship. So juniors coming up next. This has been good scrap all weekend because uh, the juniors in the UK run these beautiful little Suzuki Swifts. And uh, in Ireland, we have two, two cars, well, two classes, really. It was uh, Z-Tech Fiestas, but uh, the 1.6 Mini Cooper that we're running in the patch tire equipment junior mini challenge circuit racing uh, are also allowed in. So Leah McManus has just got one of them, and she's out there too. There's our grid, Teddy McPherson on pole position, Holly Woolley alongside, Caden Harris on the outside, and then Toby Maguire in the 1.2 ZTEC Fiesta, and Leah McManus in the 1.6. Beautifully turned out Mini Cooper. And uh, Leah smashed her best time. She's very inexperienced, but she did a 50.1 yesterday. I think got into the 47s this morning. So she was, I was talking to her last night. She's very keen to keep improving her lap times, and she was taking the joker lap early as we said to uh, to get away from the action and just concentrate on on getting more seat time in the car but she went very very quickly this morning on a, one of her laps so she'll know how to do it now and continuing to improve every time out local girl here to mondello park and uh, loves her racing we're getting ready to go and away they go it's pretty equal from the three suzuki's nothing in it But these Suzuki's in the little uh, in the little Fiesta, it's worth watching him in this car. He fires it around. Of course, these other drivers just learning Mondello Park. Whereas Toby's been racing in juniors for two years. Very, very quick young man, and uh, he knows his way around here. The little Fiesta doesn't have it in a straight line. I don't think, although it's not much in it, is there? As he tucks in behind 119, there goes to the inside, goes to the outside, almost like he's going to have a lunge, but he doesn't. Down into turn one, it's Caden Harris leading. That's Teddy McPherson under massive pressure now from Toby Maguire as they go across rally cross one and down towards the hole in the hedge or the brakes all down to second gear here toby almost leaving the door open but leaving go he was going to take the joker lap but mcpherson took it so toby changed his mind decided to get the head down and stay out there fast lap to caden harris standing start of course because he took the lead so we'll see what the lap times are when they go by Toby Maguire trying really hard here up onto the inside curb and right out onto the green and white curbs on the exit. But Caden Harris getting away out front. 44.868, fastest lap of the race. Toby Maguire responds, 45.9, not as quick. Teddy McPherson goes through. And Liam McManus goes through. 48.3, so again, she's down to the quicker lap time. She was doing 50s yesterday, so big improvements. I think she might have done a high 47, but that's her first flying lap in this heat, 48.376. 
McGuire just rejoining there. For Caden Harris it is. Two laps completed, coming down to complete three laps. The distinctive black and green car. And Holly Woolley next up. That's McGuire just ahead of McPherson, having uh, stayed ahead there during the joker lap. Leader going on to his joker lap now. Three laps completed. Holly taking hers as well. Here comes Toby Maguire. Can he get close to the leader? I don't think so. It looks like he's well ahead. Toby with a good run. Should be good for second place, though. He'd be happy with that. Oh, fires the car into the right hander. You can see it bouncing around. Those Fiestas run standard shocks. Well, a KYB standard spec shock and a control lowering spring just to keep costs down so they don't have proper uh, race or rally suspension on them. Here comes the leader. Perfect job from the outside of the front row. The checker flag is prepared for Caden Harris. Great win. Toby Maguire charges to second place and takes fast slap on the final lap 44.291. Good stuff from Toby. Then Teddy McPherson in third, Holly Woolley in fourth, and ever improving Liam McManus from Motorworks takes fifth place. Second grid of, ju grid of juniors almost getting ready to go. Here at Modelo Park, then the boogies will have their final, and then that will be uh, the second heat's over. I would, we will have what I would imagine will be a, a very truncated uh, lunch break before we go back racing again, because I just know the officials below me here in the tower will be very, very keen to try and pull uh, some time back. And, and normally they, they try and do that anyway, but we're very much aware that our UK visitors have a ferry to catch this evening and they need to get away fairly sharpish from Mandela Park, so we will try and get as much time as we can back during the lunch break and uh, get things rolling again so they can get loaded up and get out and head for Dublin Port uh, pretty quickly after this event.